I made a long video on the other channel, The Ramblings of Bry, about me vape. I am still vaping. Really am enjoying that. It's a wild berry fruit thing in there, which is very eating. Just give me a ball. I don't know where he found that. I'll be with you in a minute, darling. Just make a video. Yeah, in a minute. Okay. Yeah, with the vape. I've got two paintings this week. I seem to have had two for the last three or four weeks, so I'll try harder for next week. Um, the trouble is they're big paintings, so well they're big-ish paintings, so they take me quite a while, as you can imagine, really. So which to show you first? Okay, I have um, a semi-realism one, and I have my interpretation of what I saw in the big woods that I went to, which is Vibrations, uh, and the painting is nothing like it, but to me it is artistic liberties and all the rest of it so I'll just show you briefly and uh, I'll take some photos and put photos on at the end semi-realism that one and this one crazy but I love this I love that one first of all because it took me a long time but this took me just as long believe it or not yeah I know but it's beautiful I think it's beautiful I love it got some sparkles in the middle as well so I'll try and turn it in the light you might see them you might not Thank you for watching. They would be up on the Thursday, which is the 28th of this month, February. Take care. showing you the two pieces coming up this week on the 28th but this video is just a, a little bit of a longer look really because um, I may do a premiere so this video now if I do the premiere it will be part of the premiere so to have a, a better look A nice close look now. There you go. So we've got some wild flowers in there, we've got three little birds. Three little seagulls, actually. My blue mountain that I was banging on about last week, if you remember. And some water and some rocks. Some sticks. Some 
trees, bushes. to everybody in the chat. I probably will make a premiere, so these two pieces are going up on the 28th, so um, if we do make a premiere, then hello, hello to everybody. Thank you for joining me. Last week we had 14, uh, which was quite good, I thought, really. I'm not really in it for the numbers, but I'm only just says 14 are now watching on my screen. I know, I know what you're thinking. Well, I think it's wonderful. It's powerful, it's punchy, it's a bit crazy, but there's a piece about it. You can have it any way up, couldn't you, really, this one? Okay. Good look there. I'll try and put some photos on and then it saves me from wobbling it because I know it makes people crazy. So yeah, we're still vaping. Um, exciting news in the Ishi household, if you like. Got a Henry Hoover and it works fine, so that's good. Um, bit sad, I know, but... Um, You've got to, haven't you? You know, if you've got a place with carpet, I've got carpet everywhere, bar in the kitchen, and carpet in the bathroom as well, you know. So you've got to have, and I've got a dog who loses hair, um, never wipes his feet when he comes in. So yeah, you've got to, um, you've got to look after the place, haven't you? You want to live clean and tidy, to a degree. So you've got to have a decent hoover. The reason why I went for Henry the last Hoover I bought, I think it might have been maybe 50 quid to about 70 quid, somewhere like that. You know, and I thought it was a reasonable Hoover. And, um, you know, it's fucked up on me. It's dead. You know, I killed it after just 10 months. But I do remember the first time I lived in Dorset, um, I, well, I lived in a flat, first of all. Then when I moved into my house, I bought a house bought um, a large three bedroom house and um, I bought a Henry Hoover and I had it for all the years for about 13 years while I lived in Dorset it never let me down once if you can hear a noise we've got a road sweeper going past slowly now that's a bloody vacuum it never let me down once I lived there for about 13 years I used it um, probably once a week, once every two weeks, something like that, and um, it just does the job, a Henry Hoover just does the job. What I like here is I plug the Hoover in, this is bloody boring isn't it, I plug the Hoover in and I can do the whole of this bungalow, every square inch of it. Um, the last Hoover I had to unplug as I got towards the bathroom and plug it in, in, in the bedroom, it's all right palaver isn't it, eh? so I'm glad it's dead. Just got to go down the tip with it. Um, so I love that about it. I love the fact that it manoeuvres so easy. There's it, no stress whatsoever. And the poles that you get with it, I put them all together because I'm quite tall. Um, so you put them all together and then with a brush or whatever, whatever the thing's called, the floor thing at the end, um, you got like about a six foot reach, something like that, plus your arm, so you, what was it, nine foot reach. So I don't get cobwebs here, um, but I used to in Dorset, um, um, used to in Dorset, used to in my first place. Um, and I think, I don't know whether it's because of cornfields, I suppose it was really, you know, because we lived in slightly in a farm place. 
and um, we used to get quite a lot of cobwebs. But with a six foot thing, you just beep, beep, and it's done. It's very, very simple and easy. Henry Hoover. I can't, um, I can't fault a Henry Hoover, really. As I say, I had mine for years. Maybe I was lucky, I don't know. But I had mine for absolute years. I think his eyes fell off, which was a shame. Apart from that, you know, bumped and scratched and what have you. I do remember... Um, Though I used to carry it upstairs, because they're quite light actually, strangely, for a, a decent Hoover. Carried it upstairs and a couple of times I knocked it and it fell all the way downstairs, crashing and banging. And it still worked, it never split. I always thought the plastic would split, but they're so well made. And they use them on building sites and hotels and hospitals and stuff like that. So um, that's the way to go. If you ever want a Hoover, Henry Hoover. This comes to you paid by Henry the Hoover. So, two this week, I got my semi realism. Okay, and my. I know. I love sitting at home. Gonna find it hard to let go, particularly of this one. I don't, don't know why, it just means a lot to me. Okay. If I've got any more um, to talk about or whatever, I will talk about it in a few minutes. Um, well, it'll be a few minutes, actually, it'll be a few seconds to you. Um, I'll attack it on the end of this um, while we're having a chat. So, um, if you've got any questions about my art or about anything really, ask me a question, um, test me. No, just ask me a question if you like, and uh, if I know the answer, I know the answer. If I don't, I don't. Um, I don't live a life of pretense, really. Don't bother with that, you know. You know what you know, and that's that's all you know, kind of thing, you know. Um, I love learning. I love um, new things coming into my mind and stuff like that. That's wonderful. What I don't like to do, if somebody says, Brian, could you give me some advice, blah, blah, blah. And if I'm not sure... I say I'm not really sure, I don't know, you know, how do you feel about it, you know, how do you see it going or whatever, because the worst thing to do, I suppose, really, is to offer somebody some advice that you're not sure about yourself, you know, and mostly I talk, particularly on the other channel, the Ramblings of Briar, I talk on there um, from a place of knowing, really, you know, I think, I mean, somebody called me the wise wizard or whatever it was, um, which I'm not, I'm just an ordinary person, but I think you do get a bit of wisdom the older you get, really, and it's just because we follow this path, you know, we're on this journey through life, and uh, I live um, a slightly alternative life, I suppose, really, a bit of a spiritual life, and a different life to a lot of people that I see around me, not better, just different, and therefore I've gleaned and picked up a lot of things along the way, a lot of knowledge and a lot of opinions and a lot of views on things. And I do know what works and what doesn't work on certain levels. So if somebody asks me a question, if it's something that I've been through or thought a lot about, then obviously I can advise them and um, it's all good. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna take some photos of these now. You won't see this until Tuesday, but I'm going to take some photos now because the air is lovely out there. If you ever want to take a photograph of a piece of art or something that you're selling on eBay, do it outside on a slightly overcast day. The light is absolutely phenomenal. The colours will... They bleed through as realism, you know, they really show the true colours. You know, I will take photos in a few minutes and these photos will show the true hues of the paints that I've used. So the true value of those hues will come through. If you take it on a sunny day, it can be washed out and bleached out, you know, and take it on a dull day. And then you have to manipulate it yourself on the PC just to make the colours pop again. So, yeah, that's my advice. If you want to take a photo outside um, of something fairly close up, really, like obviously artwork, then outside, semi-cloudy day, and uh, you get the true colours. So I'm going to go and take some photos now. 
but I may be back in a bit. Um, if I'm not, no, I will be back because um, I got a couple of little things that I was going to say about art and stuff like that. So uh, just keep the video going. So any questions, ask me. Cheers. Take care. Be well. Back shortly. Ta -da. <laughs>
<laughs> Hello. I've had to come out to do this video, on this part of the video. Um, this is going to go on to Ishiar, but it also might go on to the ramblings of Bry with Sea. Um, but I had to come out. My neighbour that touches me is having a brand new bathroom fitted today, so there's lots of plumbers, noise, banging, crashing. Hardly so I think, and uh, it was scaring Bodhi as well. So it's good to come out and listen to the birds. Oh. Beautiful, nice to hear the birds. I've been very lucky the last two days, very, very lucky. Um, Oh, there's a friend of mine now come in, bless her. She'll want to chat. I'll tell you what, Bo, we go this way, we'll avoid her because she hasn't seen me yet. <laughs> Avoiding people. Been very lucky the last two days. Yesterday morning, um, I got out of bed. I always do the same thing. Bo's always a bit excited to see me, so I give him a little cuddle and say good morning to him. He's on his couch. And, um, I then go into the kitchen, first thing I do is put the kettle on. And uh, what I do, I stand in silence. I look out, look at the sky, look at the trees, and just have a few moments of absolute silence. That's what I do every morning. Just wait for the kettle and just being, just, that's what I do. It's nice, important part of the day for me, really. So I was stood there. Put the kettle on and then tap 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 at the door and it was the delivery guy with my new hoover i've got a henry hoover what exciting i know <laughs> um good boy so had i stayed in bed one more minute i, I would have had to jump out of bed and get dressed and rush around and what have you but i was just stood there next to the door you know so that was very, very lucky. And today the plumbers arrived for my neighbour to his new bathroom and shower unit, etc. etc. He's having the whole lot, the toilet, the shower, everything fitted, sink and all the rest of it. Um, so there's lots of work and lots of noise. But that's fine because we've been up and about the last hour. And uh, they just started making a lot of noise. Bodhi got concerned and I said, oh, I'll tell you what, mate, let's take you out. Look at the lovely snowdrops. See them? So, um, where's my friend? Has she gone? Oh, shit, she's coming my way now. Oh, no, it's somebody else. Come here, Bode. Here. Ready? Good boy. Okay, I'll continue this in a sec while we're playing. You are a good boy, look at him. Are you ready? Oh, good boy, come on then. Oh, we've got somebody there. Somebody there. Come this way. And then my friend at the top. Very busy. Yeah, so we decided to go out. So I got ready, just as I'm about to leave. Tucked us half at the door, my new camera. Hello, has arrived. So, um, I sent hello to that dog there. I can see him. No, perhaps not. Ready? Hey, good boy. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely wonderful. Do you remember this time last year? It was the beast from the east. <laughs> No, chance with him. no, he's like a little no rocket. <laughs> yes, yeah, wonderful today, isn't it? Oh, Just right. what we want. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Come on then. Is it a border collie? Yeah, well, he's a border collie cross. But cross I don't yeah, know what I he's crossed yeah, with. He's not got the long ear, that's it. No, the way he's runs, he's likely to be crossed with a bloody whip it or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or rocket. Oh yeah, he's, he's certainly got that movement. Isn't he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, he flies round. Yeah. Oh, look at that. 
God bless him. The, 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 the timing and everything. Oh, absolutely. He knows the distance I'm going to throw it as well. And he always runs here, and stops. So yeah, they are. They are clever. Yeah. Come on, Pep. Take care, mate. Enjoy your day. Ready? Up. Good boy. And more people coming now. Up that way. You're a cheeky boy. Gotta wait for these people to finish. So, anyway, where was I? Yeah, so my new camera arrived just as we were about to leave. <coughs> so lucky for two days. Ready? Good boy. Come closer. Good boy. Morning. 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 Good boy. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Ready? Can we go this way? <laughs> wow, lots of people around. Somebody said the other day, um, the woods I go to, my local woods, these ones, are lovely because there's nobody there. Today, it's full of people. So yeah, very lucky to get my, um, my hoover just when I woke up and very lucky just before we left to get my camera today. I haven't even opened the box. I'll do that later today. Okay, so this video, I don't know which channel it's gonna go up on now, really, because uh, we've been chatting. Anyway, whatever, let's carry on. Um, I wanted to talk in this video, because I was originally gonna make this for a Shi'ar, as I say, it might go up on both channels. Um, how to price a piece of art. It's very, very difficult because one of my neighbors that I don't know very well uh, wants a piece of art off me and he's gonna come around on Tuesday and have a look, see what I've got. I think I've got three pieces that I could possibly sell. And uh, he tapped today, a bit of a nuisance, but he tapped today and he said, can I have a look at the piece of art? I said, no, not till Tuesday, I have told you, you know, because um, I'm not ready. <sighs> Out of breath. So he said, how much you want? And I said, well, I normally put them up for around 50 pounds, um, but you know, I can knock a fiver off because you're my neighbor, 45. And he said, is that it? He said, I was thinking about a hundred quid. And I said, well, it's very nice of you. I said, I do, you know, sometimes they, they do go up to that sort of price, but uh, I'm happy with the three that I've got in mind. You know, we're doing for 40 quid, 45 quid. He said, no, I want to pay 100 quid. I said, well, you haven't seen the piece yet. Come around Tuesday, uh, I'll show you the piece and we'll discuss money then. Um, and he said, well, anyway, it's 100 quid. So off he went really with that, which is fine, you know, I won't be accepting 100 quid. Um, these three pieces I've got in mind, they're probably worth somewhere from 40 to 70, I would say. So, uh, you know, if I got 40 quid or 50 quid off him, I'd be more than happy. But how to price a piece of art is a very difficult thing. There's videos on it and people have been discussing it forever more. It's worth whatever it is worth to the buyer, to the purchaser, you know. Um, there's a lot of people say uh, so much per square inch, like you know, five pound per square inch and that sort of thing. If I did that, you know, then my painting is probably worth 200 pounds. So what I do, I, I think about the time and the effort and materials and combine all of that really and just look at it and think what it's worth. I normally put a starting price of around 50 to 55 pounds for the 10 by 12s. Reason how I've come by that is I think a very minimal price, but three pounds per hour. Um, take three days to do a piece at probably six-ish hours per day. Um, you know, he's somewhere between really 40 and 80 pounds. 
So I kind of go midway-ish and I start really about 55. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, sunshine, Mr. Solar Face is lovely. So that's how I come by my prices really. I think about three pounds per hour, which when you think about it for a, an original unique piece of work for three pounds per hour, you know, even if, well, whatever job you do in life, you're doing it for more than three pounds per hour. But, um, so that's how I get my prices, really, just I'd discuss that. Yeah, if I work for five hours in a day at three pounds, uh, 12, 15, that's 15 quid, isn't there? Times three days, which is 45 quid, so plus materials is 50 pounds. That's how I work out a piece, three pounds per hour. Not a lot to ask for, I don't think, but hey, ready, go! Um, that's it, really, so... I don't know whether to put this up. I might put this up on both channels then, perhaps, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to do a premiere every Tuesday evening on Ishiya at 7 p.m. if you'd like to join me over there or not, whatever. Uh, have a great day. It's a beautiful day. Go outside, come alive. Take care then, be well.